I bought an old prison bus, pulled out all the cages and seats and stuff, yanked the toilet, removed the floor, and now have a new floor in it and most of a new wiring setup. But before I can move on to the build, I need to do some odd jobs. I try to do one thing at a time when doing projects and to finish each thing before moving on to the next, but some jobs had been left unfinished and some other things are just by nature odd jobs. Odd jobs aren't full jobs, they are little side things that need to be done and are easy to put off. The first odd job, I crawled under the bus with determination and will and confronted the prison bus black tank. I'm anticipating this job to have a high gross out factor. If you're not familiar with the term black tank, black tank. It's a tank on an RV or bus or boat, or in this case, prison bus, that is full of shit. If you flush the toilet, it goes into the black tank. You may remember that the prison bus had a nice looking stainless steel toilet. The tank got filled every time the driver flushed the toilet via the remote control button up front. The black tank saw some action for 17 years. So I pulled the black tank. It was strapped to the bottom of the bus with steel straps that I cut through. Then it was held in with a giant steel bar that I cut through. Then it was spray foamed in place. I chipped away at the foam. When I got the tank off, I washed it out and bleached it for the hundredth time and then filled it with water to see if it leaked. It didn't. I posted a picture of the tank on Instagram asking if people thought I should keep it or ditch it. And all the guys said, yeah, definitely keep it. And the one woman who responded said she wouldn't touch that tank with someone else's hand. I'm keeping the tank. It just needs a new exit valve. That's another odd job. I also spent time in the evening scraping the sticky goop off the ceilings of the bus. This was left behind from adhesive that was used to keep air conditioned air out of the walls of the bus and pouring down coolly on the passengers. I bet that was nice. The goop is not nice. I tried spraying lots of goof off on the adhesive and the adhesive just laughed. So I switched to a heat gun and sharpened putty knife which works well but is slow. It's just really, really slow. When you're in the bus doing this odd job, it kind of smells like someone is toasting 100 marshmallows with high glue content. I'm still not done with this odd job. About those air conditioners, which are called headbanger units. I've hit my head on them about 50 times. Early on in the project, I thought I'd get rid of them, but then got a few suggestions to keep them. Air conditioners are nice and I can't really handle the heat, so I decided to keep them. So I finally called around and found an auto restoration shop and they said they could drain the refrigerant on one AC unit so I could pull it and keep the other. That was my plan, downsized to one headbanger, hiding it in a new cabinet. The shop had a huge garage and tall door so I pulled the bus right in. The guy at the shop found the drain taps for the AC units and then discovered that there was almost no refrigerant in the headbanger system after all. He drained what was left in them and didn't even charge me. The consensus at the shop was that I should turn the bus into a party bus. Most of the guys at the shop had experience with party buses. When I got home, I decided I'd had it with the headbanger units. Perceived benefit did not match pain in the neck given the potential for more leaks and problems, so I pulled both units. Out, gone, no more headbangers. This odd job was utterly out of sequence, as it now left me with two small holes in the floor that I had to retro-weld and insulate and floor over. So I did that. Another odd job. Remember the fuel sending unit? That's the thing that sends fuel from the back of the bus up to the engine, and I left access to the unit via an access door in the floor. This door ended up being squishy if you stood on it because it was resting on nothing but foam insulation. So another odd job was to fabricate a steel flange to lock that access door in place. I wanted the flange to be pretty hardcore since there's a good chance that when you jump off the bed, you'll land right on the access door. That would be bad if it's squished, so it needed a hardcore flange to support the door. I cut up pieces of 2 inch steel for the flange, cleaned them up, welded them, sanded and cleaned them in various ways, and drilled a million holes in them so that the access door would be locked into the flooring around it. This worked out well. I might have used too many screws, but I like the flange. Speaking of fuel, the fuel tank access door has been another long-term problem. 
As it's currently designed, if you happen to spill diesel when filling the fuel tank, that diesel fuel will actually get soaked up by the wooden floors of the bus. The sides of the floor wood are exposed near the tank opening. These spills must have happened a lot back in the prison bus days, as when I pulled the old floors out, they were actually saturated with diesel fuel, completely soaked. So to keep this from happening again, I cut up an old rubbery tub, glued it into the fuel access door area, painted the steel fuel door cover, and put it all back together. This looked pretty good. Oh, and I spent some time sealing up windows so they will leak a little less. <laughs> 